So this sounds great. If we know the period of the motion of a neutron star, we can work out how far away the planet is. And if we know the amplitude, how much its distance changes, we can work out the mass. But there is a problem. What's this problem? Well, let's say we're over here, that's our eye, and we're looking at a pulsar. And let's say that pulsar is going around in a circle like this. In that case, what we measure is the change in distance along the line of sight. So at its nearest point to the Earth, it's here. At the furthest point, it's over there. And so we will measure a radius of its motion, which is that. So that's the r we observe, which in this case is equal to the radius of the motion of the star. But what happens if instead of being edge on like that, the neutron star is moving something like this, inclined to our line of sight. So once again, we've got the Earth over here. In this case, the closest point to the Earth is over there. And the furthest point is over here. This is our star, but that's not what we observe. What we see is the difference between the distance here, the closest point, to the distance there, at the furthest point. So the r we measure is actually this distance here, the r observed. So r observed equals r star if the orbit is edge on, but in general they are not going to be equal to each other. Hmm. So how are we going to compare them? Well, we can look at this with a bit of trigonometry. So let's assume we have our orbit here, and once again our line of sight over here to the Earth. We normally measure how tilted an orbit is with what's called an inclination angle. Let's draw a line to the Earth. And this here is the axis of rotation, which is perpendicular at right angles to the actual orbital plane. And this is the inclination angle as normally used by astronomers. Now we know that this is our star, the radius of the star's orbital motion. But what we actually observe is this, our obs. So how are our obs and our star related? Well, we know this is the inclination angle here. We know that is 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees. So this angle in here must be 90 minus i. As that's 90, this angle here must be, remember the angles in a triangle add up to 180, so you've got 180 minus that. So that's going to be i. Now from trigonometry, you may remember that the definition of the sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So if that's i, the opposite is the opposite side of the triangle here, which is r obs, and the hypotenuse is r star. So we know that sine i equals opposite r observed over r star. So that gives us a relationship between what we observe and what we really care about. How does that help us? Well, not very much in practice, because actually we don't generally know what i is. If you remember, our equation to work out the mass of the planet was m star over m planet equals r planet over r star. But we don't know r star. What we know is r obs. So if we substitute this into here, we get, let's rearrange it to make it mass of the planet, we get m planet equals m star, so we're taking m planet up the side, m star, r star over r planet. But if you rearrange this, we find that r star is r obs over sine i. So that means we know that m star r obs over r planet sine i. And we don't know what the inclination angle is. There's no, no way to tell it from the pulsar data, typically. 
This equation is normally rearranged to give us that m planet sine i equals m star r observed over r planet. And if you look at many tables of exoplanets you can find on the web, you'll find that they don't actually tell you what the mass of the planet is. What they tell you is mass of the planet times the sine of the inclination angle, because that's normally all you can measure. You don't know this value. What does it mean? Well, let's take this equation over here. What it means is if the inclination angle is 0, the mass of the planet could be infinity. If the uh, inclination angle gets larger up to 90 degrees, then mass planet is just m star r observed r planet. So all we can really tell is a lower limit on the mass of planet. We can tell that it's big, could be bigger than that value, but all we really know is a limit on it. Bummer.